Hello, this is Brett from Survival Comms. And today we're going to talk about and test a mobile antenna kit I picked up at the Orlando Hamcation 2024 for a dollar. To sweeten the deal, this antenna kit is not some Amazon junk, but actually a Styco. Styco is an American company that has been in the antenna business since the 60s, and they have an enormous product catalog that focuses on professional and military markets. They are known for excellent quality, but high cost, so my friend finding several of these for a dollar each was a good find. This antenna kit is a 1995 vintage NMO dual band antenna for both the 800 megahertz and VHF bands and it's designed to allow two separate transmitters of these bands to share the antenna with its included diplexer. Now let's open the bag and see what the heck we have inside. And here are all our specifics off of the packaging here. Let's get everything out of this packaging and look at our component parts. Here are our contents laid out. We have a set of instructions which are pretty generic. We have a 5 8 wave 800 megahertz antenna. We have a short feed line section attached to an NMO base with the modification we're going to talk about in a minute. We have our ring for our NMO mount. We have a gasket for our antenna and we have some double sided adhesive to mount this diplexer inside of our headliner. The antenna appears just to be a 5 8 wave 800 megahertz antenna, nothing special about that. About 10 years ago, when you could get these old 5 8 wave antennas for next to nothing, I made a video on how to take two of these and make a dual band 2 meter 70 centimeter antenna. You merely remove the element from here, you shorten it to a quarter wavelength below the coil, invert this and place this inside the base, and then you take a second antenna element. You cut it close to the coil and you get a small shaft coupler and you tie these elements together, measuring your reflected power at two meters and then shortening as needed and then filing flats in both of these elements and using set screws to tie the two elements together. Works out great. And as a matter of fact, this is the same antenna from that video 10 years ago. Now this is where things get interesting. We have a short section of RG58 tied to our NMO mount terminated in a BNC male that interfaces to our diplexer and then we install this entire assembly up in the headliner. What makes it unique is is that we have this small inductor that they have that they've tied across our NMO mount and let's see what kind of value that inductor has. Now we come to our crossband coupler or diplexer here, and it doesn't feel like there's much in here. We may end up needing to take this apart just to see what's going on inside, but you can see we have three BNC female connectors, our antenna, or that NMO mount will go right here, and then we have two sections of feed line we'll tie in here for our VHF radio and our 800 radio. And this is the inside of our crossband coupler or diplexer. This is our VHF side. This is our antenna connection point and this is the 800 megahertz side so you can see that we have a lot of coils and capacitors in here and what this is doing is is this is keeping the VHF out of the 800 and the 800 out of the VHF so let's do a little bit of testing here and see just how effective all these components are in performing their intended function now we are testing our diplexer for pass and reject characteristics what you see is the insertion loss of the device under test, which is 0.16 dB. This image is the VHF reject measured on the 800 port. It could be optimized for reject if we spent the time tweaking the coils, and that would improve the null, but being down 32 dB isn't too shabby. Now we have moved to the VHF port and terminated the 800. This is our VHF pass, and it's lossier than I would like to see, exhibiting almost three quarter of a dB of loss in the commercial split. When we moved to a fed split frequency, the loss decreases to a quarter of a dB, and this is more like it. This represents the target market for this antenna after all. This is our 800 reject on the VHF port, and you can see it is a little bit less than 20 dB down, 
when we look at this data, we need to consider that we're not looking at an in-band isolation requirement, however. Here's our test setup here. I've got a couple of sawhorses here at an old street sign. I put a three-quarter inch hole in it, and we've got the exact same length of cable for both mounts since the Stico mount is an integral part of their antenna system, and this is just a standard NMO kit right here. Currently we have our control antenna mounted, which is our Larson VHF, UHF, and 800 megahertz antenna. Now let's move on to testing some performance characteristics and comparisons. We'll be testing three antennas today. The first will be our Larson NMO 150, 450, 758, which will be our control antenna. The second will be the dual band VHF UHF antenna I made out of surplus 800 megahertz antennas. The third will be our Stico antenna. Now this is going to flow fast and we'll be testing each antenna for resonant point, SWR, return loss, field strength, and receive performance. The important data points are circled in the images shared. I will compile and share all of the data for comparison and review, so let's get started. First up is our Larson, which will be our control antenna. We are testing VHF at this point, and you are looking at the SWR, the antenna's resonant point, and its porous match point within the swept spectrum. Next is our VHF return loss and its maxima and minima. Now, this is the Larson's received performance of a low-powered carrier 100 yards away, followed by our field strength measurement taken 25 yards away. Next up is my homemade VHF UHF dual band antenna I made out of surplus 5 8 wave 800 megahertz antennas. It's easy to see from this sweep that the antenna favors the amateur band and that's what I built it for. Here's our return loss. And here is our received performance on the spectrum analyzer followed by our transmit field strength test. Now I have installed the Stico mount and antenna on our test fixture and for your viewing pleasure is our SWR sweep. And here is the received performance on the spectrum analyzer followed by our transmit field strength test. I performed a couple of additional tests. This one here was with the diplexer removed and you can see the steep increase in lower frequency reflected power is diminished and it had a small effect in lowering the resonant frequency. The lowest frequency I was able to tune this antenna to was 154 megahertz and in doing so the base of the whip was barely retained by the set screw. Now we begin our 700-800 megahertz testing starting with our Larson tri-band. No surprise here, the antenna performs well across the swept range. Here is the Larson's return loss. And here is the received performance, followed by our transmit field strength test. Here is our Stico on 700, 800 megahertz. This antenna being a product manufactured before rebanding, the performance is better higher in frequency in the swept range than lower. Regardless of this, this antenna performs well across the swept range. Here is our return loss. And here is our received performance followed by our transmit field strength. Now you're seeing a large increase in field strength measured in comparison to VHF, but this is due to a couple different factors. The first is that the Larson and Stico are both gain antennas at 800 megahertz, the Larson being two decibels of gain over a dipole and the Stico being three decibels over a dipole. 
The second is that the meter I am using for field strength measurement is more sensitive at higher frequencies than lower frequencies. Here is the data we captured. I didn't intend for this to be an antenna battle royale, only to compare this antenna with a couple other variants to see what we learned. We can see that my homebrew dual band did best in VHF performance despite the diminutive difference in match efficiency as expressed in return loss against it compared to our Larson control antenna. This is the nature of antennas in a complicated design engineered to do all will fall behind in performance compared to a simpler design. The Styco fell behind due to this as well. The loss in the diplexer coupled with the fact that our test transmissions were 20 megahertz below its resonant point were working against it. The diplexer's insertion loss minima closely matches its resonant point so operation of it within its design constraints would assist its performance, but it would still fall behind a comparable tuned quarter wave. On 800 MHz, the Styco seemed to hold an edge and match as well as return loss, but again, loss in an antenna system induces error in reflected power measurement. Couple this with the addition of the loss across two additional RF connections necessitated in the Styco design at 800 MHz, and the sum inefficiency is what we saw demonstrated. And this is why I do what I do. So in closing, it is pretty obvious this is a vintage specialty antenna for a specialty market. The ability for an end user to be able to use their 800 radio while monitoring old school VHF wireless microphones. The ability to operate on a VHF tactical while using a bag phone, etc. The antenna has a form factor that was prevalent in the 800 SMR and analog cellular days and it would be less stealthy on an unmarked car than a license plate or bumper antenna but would outperform either one of those contemporary options hands down. It is a handmade piece of vintage tech that in its day was state-of-the-art and could still be used today for the same application. It was well worth the dollar I spent for it to be able to study it and share it with you. I hope this helps. This is Brett from Survival Comms. Till next time.